FAFSA. I'm sure you've heard this word over and over again. But did you know that there are a few mistakes that can hinder your family in the process and possibly cost you tons of money? Don't worry, I'm gonna cover them so that you don't fall into these traps. Hey there, my name is Jocelyn Pearson, founder of the Scholarship System and Debt Free Degree Lab, where we redefine paying for college to help families build strong financial futures rather than ones where their students are paying on student loans for decades to come. Now, we've helped families get well over $10 million in scholarships, and we've also helped families negotiate, appeal, get more money through FAFSA. So we wanna focus on that in today's video. Now, before I get started, Click subscribe because every week we release a new strategy, including scholarships, FAFSA, and so much more. So before I get into the three mistakes I wanna focus on today, I wanna just explain what would happen if there is a mistake. First, don't panic. It's very common. However, we do want to fix this as quickly as possible. So a lot of people make mistakes. It's very easy to do with this form, and this form can feel overwhelming and confusing. The good news is that you'll be able to do this form every year while your student is in college, so you'll get lots of practice. But that said, what we want to do is make sure we correct it as soon as possible. And the reason is the FAFSA form is a government-based form that gives your student student access to government-based money, as well as university-based money, as well as state-based money. Now, I have an entire FAFSA playlist where you can learn all the nitty-gritty details about FAFSA. So we'll link to that in the description. Make sure you check it out after today's video. But since this form is used to dictate so much money from so many different sources, filling it out incorrectly can flag that. So if you're flagged because something looks off or looks odd or numbers don't match something, then it pauses the institution from awarding that financial aid. In some situations, the aid is first come first serve. So the longer we take to get it corrected, the longer it takes to get the correct numbers submitted and finalized, the longer it takes to get our award letter and sometimes that could mean that we miss out on money. So this is why it is so important to make sure that we avoid these mistakes or correct them as soon as possible. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. The first mistake that I want to cover today is incorrectly filling in either your information or your student's information. This happens a lot with the asset section. It's a very easy area to make mistakes. However, it can even happen in simple areas that you easily just kind of overlook, like marital status or social security numbers, or sometimes parents might fill in the student's information or vice versa when actually is asking about the other person. Now, continuing along with that first mistake where there are so just easily uh, easy errors, one of the most common questions that we get is around 529 plans. This is where a lot of families get tripped up when it comes to submitting numbers. So from FAFSA itself, and I'm actually going to read this just for a quick second. The total value of a 529 plan generally is an investment asset of the owner of the account, okay? So on a 529 plan, there is an owner and there is a beneficiary. The reason FAFSA does it this way is because a parent can change the beneficiary at any time. So the owner of the 529 plan is where it needs to be claimed. Now, if the owner of the 529 plan is the student, it is considered a parent asset. So here is where there is an exception, so it would count as a parent asset. Now, here is an interesting part of this, and that is if the owner is someone other than the parent or the student, say maybe a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a godparent, started a 529 plan and they are the owner, then only the payouts, only the distributions from the plan will be included. So this would be included in the area where it says money received or gifted towards college, not already reported on FAFSA. So this is a strategy in Debt-Free Degree Lab where we cover strategies beyond scholarships. This is one of those strategies that we teach families around uh, if we can have, say, a grandparent hold the 529 money until the end, or um, and if we can avoid distributions, then this could be a trick to, to minimize our our number on FAFSA, which is called an EFC, our expected family contribution, and hopefully maximize financial aid. So this is a benefit. Now comment below, does your family have a 529 plan? And if so, 
who started it? Is it by the parents or did someone outside of the parents start the 529 plan? I'd love to know in the comments because I'd love to see how often this scenario comes into play. Okay, so that said, that was a big one. So let's get into a little bit of an easier one. Number two is forgetting to sign the FAFSA. So this might sound simple, but actually in order to sign the FAFSA, you and your student need to have a FAFSA ID, an, an FSA ID. And they can take a few days to receive, so you don't want to wait until last minute to do this pro part of the process. But that said, both you, the parent, and the student have to sign FAFSA in order to submit it. Otherwise, it will be considered incomplete and therefore will run into the same errors I, or issues I mentioned earlier where it could delay that financial aid award letter and possibly have your student miss out on money. Now, the one exception to this is if a student is independent, then they're the only ones that need to sign this. But in most cases, students are not considered independent. Okay, now the third one is the most important, and that is not submitting FAFSA. We have seen so many stories where a coworker, an uncle, or a, a friend of the family told a family that, oh, don't bother submitting FAFSA, you won't get anything anyway. And the thing is that I've seen, one, one family specifically comes to mind, actually two, one family missed out on $17,000 per year because of that advice. And I know another student, they missed the deadline for submitting FAFSA because they were dragging their feet on, do we want to do it? Do we not? And they miss out on $40,000 per year. This can be a huge, huge mistake. So I always tell our families in the scholarship system and at Free Degree Lab, always, always, always submit FAFSA. And to go off of that, like I mentioned earlier, it's every single year while your student is in college. So you want to do it all the way until their final school year in college, until they're graduating, because every year your financial situation changes. But by not submitting FAFSA, again, you're, you and your student are missing out on federal money, state money, and college money. There are universities that will not even give out awards of their own without this information. So it is critical that your family submits FAFSA each year. Now, just going off of this, just kind of a side note, this also is a, an area where we want to make sure we're doing scholarship applications each year. So if you, of course, that's not part of this video, but if you want specific steps on where to find legitimate scholarships, how to win scholarships so that you can help your student get money for college, then click the link on the screen or you can go to the link in the description for my free training. You can go to the scholarshipsystem.com slash free training as well. And I will cover the six steps to securing scholarships so that you and your student can really hit that hard and hopefully get money from FAFSA and from scholarships. So that said, FAFSA is a huge opportunity. It can really open up the doors to a lot of money for your families when done correctly. So again, the biggest tip here is to make sure that we're following instructions, we submit things correctly, and if we make errors, fix them as quickly as possible. Now, don't forget to register for that free training I mentioned. You can find all the links, including the FAFSA playlist I mentioned, the free scholarship training in the description below. And also make sure you hit subscribe because every week there's a new strategy on completely different topics to help your, you and your student get your student through college with as little debt as possible. All right, I'll see you in the next video.